Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Matt for The Remnant Underground, coming to you live from the dark and musty catacombs deep beneath the streets of the city. So, I'm feeling kind of chipper tonight, Rob. Oh? Yeah, just a little bit. I know the world is crashing down all around us, and Pope Francis is reminding me more and more lately of Major Kong from the Dr. Strangelove film. <laughs> Dr. Strangelove years ago, do you remember? Uh, the cat with the cowboy hat? With the cowboy hat. You know he's riding the human element of the church down into the ground. <laughs> What about Major Kong? But anyway, I'm 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 chipper. So I was I guess part of the reason I'm kind of chipper is because I was watching EWTN, which is something I don't do very much, Rob. I gotta I gotta confess, yeah. but I you know I, I, someone sent me a clip of Raymond Arroyo doing his World Over program, and he's interviewing our friend Dr. Joseph Shaw, who's an Oxford fellow, and he's the guy who spearheaded that now famous or infamous, depending on your position, uh, filial correction of the seven heresies of Pope Francis. Can't believe we're saying that the seven heresies of right. uh, Pope Francis and Amoris Laetitiae. Uh, so I was just reading, I was watching this and I was thinking, you know, at a time when a lot of people are really discouraged and they're kind of saying, gee, I wonder when God's going to intervene on behalf of his church. And I started thinking, you know, things are changing. I know things are getting worse, but there's a certain sense of awakening that, that we feel over at the remnant. And I think it's worth concentrating on because Lord knows we all need a little something positive. So God is still with his church. And who would have thought even 10 years ago that a day was coming when a traditional Catholic would appear on EWTN of all places, what we used to call Neo-Catholic Central, after having organized a high-profile act of resistance to or, or correction to the errors of a reigning pontiff. And not only would this high-profile traditionalist be given an opportunity to defend that act of correction of the Pope, but he would also really pretty obviously be winning over the folks at EWTN to his point of view and to the rightness of his decision to act as he did. This week, a group of international Catholic theologians, laymen, clergy, and papal critics went public with a filial correction of the Pope. They accused Francis of propagating heresy. Joining us tonight from Edinburgh, Scotland, is one of the signatories of that filial correction and its spokesman, moral philosopher at Oxford University, Dr. Joseph Shaw. What do you think the reaction to this is? What have you heard? Anything official from the Pope? No, no, the Pope has not made any, any reaction at all. Uh, in line with his, his, his non-reaction to the uh, dubia from the Cardinals. Look, you could argue it either way, whether this should have been made public, but these questions will not go away. Father Jerry, um, some are saying these people are out of line. They don't have rights to do this. Who do they think they are? And they're acting like Protestants. The laity have the right, according to canon law, canon 212, to make known to the pastors of the church their concerns. And as Bob says, this is not going away. It's just, it's just weird to see this as everything just seems to be getting darker and kind of crazier and the world is really, really messed up right now and the church is even worse. Uh, I think the world is messed up because the church is messed up, obviously. But as we see this, you also see this awakening. And this is very important. In fact, it's, it's exactly what the Catholic Identity Conference that we've been talking a lot about over at the Remnant newspaper, it's what it's all about. Trying to bring everybody that we possibly can who, who sees the crisis and begins to realize this is, this is serious, to bring them together uh, and, and to help people you know, realize that, that, that there is something that can be done. People say, well, what are you going to do about it? Well, we're, we're going to get people together, first of all. We're going to get a conversation going. We're going to try to do whatever we can. Just because it doesn't seem realistic that we're going to have great success, this is no, our church is not built on that sort of pessimism. Our Lord toward, told his 12 fishermen friends to go out and convert the whole world. What if they had said that? Well, we can't do that. You know, we're going to give up. We're not going to do I mean, This is just silly. So all we can do is all we can do right now. And I, and I, and I get this sense, and I want to share this with you, that there are a lot of people who are waking up. So that's the good. I, I, I'm a little discouraged. Also, on the other hand, Rob, you know, if you paid attention to this, there's a little bit of an attack going on. Our, our buddy, Cardinal Burke. Right, right. I just think it's really unfortunate, and I suppose I'm going to take some heat for bringing this up. But So now Cardinal Burke is, is under a lot of, taking a lot of heat from some of our brother traditionalists for saying that the Society of St. Pius X is in schism, still. Which, of course, I don't accept, which I also say, <laughs> this is news? 
Or where have you been? You, you, you thought that Cardinal Burke was a Society of St. Pius X guy? I was kind of, kind of questioning myself. I was like, wait a minute. I've never, ever thought that Cardinal Raymond Burke was in the corner with the Society of St. Pius X. So I called up some of my friends in the Society of St. Pius X and I asked them, guys, do you think, <laughs> did you guys or did anybody in the Society ever actually imagine that Cardinal Burke was a big SSPX backer? And to a man, all of my friends in the society said, no, of course not. We've been saying this all along. Just because a, a priest or a bishop offers the Latin Mass out of the goodness of his heart or because he kind of likes it, does not mean he fully understands or grasps what it means to be a traditional Catholic. But it should come as no surprise that Cardinal Burke is a Pope Benedict guy, if you will. He believes in the Second Vatican Council. He believes the Second Vatican Council can be interpreted in light of tradition. And while he sympathizes with the Society of St. Pius X, he's chiefly concerned about schism. But in any case, it is Cardinal Burke's job to be concerned about schism. That's what he does. And now again, I disagree with him with respect to the Society of St. Pius X's schism, but I don't disagree with the sentiment. Of course, no, none of us want to have a break or a breach with, with Rome, with the Pope, with the Vatican, and so forth. But this is what happens when modernists take over the fort, which is what has happened. What do we do? Do we obey these men? Or do we go into what looks like schism uh, for the good of the, of the salvation of our souls? I mean, the mortal sin of schism was all about preventing people from leaving the church, right? That's why it's so bad. If what's now called schism in this completely back, uh, backwards church of ours, if schism means you're going to adhere to the traditional faith exactly as it was handed down over the centuries, well, obviously the spirit of the law has to be considered. So when it comes to this issue of the Society of St. Pius X and Archbishop Lefebvre and schism versus obedience and all of that, I have no doubt that there will be saints numbered on both sides of that divide, both sides of that 25-year-old controversy. Personally, speaking for myself only, I believe that Archbishop Lefebvre will one day be canonized a saint for what he did back in 1988. But not everyone agrees, and those who disagree with me are not the bad people necessarily. A lot of very good people think I'm wrong about that. So we continue to have discussions, that's all. Not everyone agrees. You know, they argue that obedience has always been more important than a lot of things, almost than anything else except the faith itself. And there's this whole defense of obedience, which is beautiful and has plenty of backing and precedent uh, from great saints of the past. Again, you've got saints on both sides of this debate. And so this incident where traditionalists are now kind of going after Cardinal Burke again, I think it's unfortunate, but I think it gives us a little chance to sort of step back and reevaluate a little bit. Because I think we all admit that we're in the middle of an all-out revolution in the church, such as the world has never seen. And people, good people, are deceived and they're confused about a lot of these issues. So we look now, all at traditional Catholics, we look out over the landscape, we look out over the hierarchy, and we say, geez, is there anybody that will just give us just that much that we can fall in behind them and at least try to bring things back to sanity and orthodoxy in the church. Who in the hierarchy, for example, still believes in the real presence? That's a good place to start, right? Who still believes in the Trinity? That's a nice place to work on. Who still believes in the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Who is willing to offer the old Latin mass publicly? <laughs> Precious few. But the ones who are, those are the ones we need to see if it's possible to work with them to further the cause of Catholic restoration on some level, even if they disagree with us on a lot of other things and on, certainly on strategy. You see, this is just war. We're involved in war and we're all behind enemy, <laughs> enemy lines. We're in occupied territory, if you will, friends. And I'm sorry, but here at The Remnant, we are very interested in working with those who've kept the faith whenever and wherever possible. And if that makes us a, what do they call us now, Rob? New trad or something, that we're fakes, whatever. If that's what, you, if that's what you need to think about us in order to sleep at night, go right ahead. There's no change at the remnant. We've always been this way. This is Michael Davies, this is Walter Matt, this is Archbishop Lefebvre. The pioneers were all this way. They didn't want to be constantly, we're traditionalists, we're in our little enclave, we're the better than everybody else. They weren't like that. They were always looking for men, priests, laity, members of the hierarchy, with whom they could work, with whom there could be a conversation about what could be done to stop the madness. So certainly, my friends, when it comes to Cardinal Raymond Burke, we have a fellow traveler there. We need to pray for him. We need to thank God for what he's done so far. You say, well, gee, where is that formal correction? Yeah, I'd like to know where it is, too. On the other hand, what if we didn't have the dubia? 
What if he had not done that? Where would we be right now? He's provided for us ecclesial cover for resistance against, a, 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 I would say, probably, I want to be careful what I say, but in my opinion, the worst pope in history. And Cardinal Burke has been extremely instrumental in helping us stand and make a resistance movement, if you will. And I remember Cardinal Burke. I mean, you got to go by what people's experience is. I, I've been in this fight for an awful long time, but I remember... I remember specifically Cardinal Burke in Rome at, during the conclave. Every day I'd be out there with my little camera and trying to get you know, interviews from various prelates. And he was tough. He was hard to get, to get a, an interview from. Why? Because he was praying the rosary constantly. I got an image. Hopefully maybe Rob can go back in the archive and dig up the video of Cardinal Burke. Every single time I saw that man during the entire conclave before Francis was elected, he's got the fedora down over his eyes, a, a black coat, and the ever-present rosary in his hand. For heaven's sakes, friends, this is not the enemy. Your Eminence, thank you so much for what you've done to support the Latin Mass back in the States. I'm so grateful. Keep up the good work. God bless you. The look on his face was of a man with the weight of the world on his shoulders. He understood what was happening to the church, and he understands it now. And if he doesn't understand the situation with the Society of St. Pius X, with some level, he's, he's, he's got a block there. <laughs> Let's look at all the things that he does understand. So no, he's not. Cardinal Burke is not a remnant traditionalist. But we are able to point to him as a mainstream cardinal and say, look, mainstream media, here we have Cardinal Burke, who is re res resisting Pope Francis's errors to his face, even though he is a mainstream cardinal. And he's not a radical traditional Catholic. He's not an SSPXer. I think it would make it a lot easier for his opponents if he were, but the reality is he's not. So friends, let me close tonight with this. We are all sheep, if you will. We're street fighters, but we're still the sheep. The shepherds are the ones that are no longer doing their jobs. So we find ourselves in this ridiculous position. We're in the midst of the worst revolution in history, and we're trying to figure out how we can get through this, how we can keep our faith, save our souls, and so forth. And really, I think that the forces of evil want more than anything else for us, for the faithful Catholics to become polarized and to become fighting with each other and demanding total acceptance to my opinion on this and my opinion on that while they go about the business of destroying the church. I mean, you see this in com boxes and Facebook, social media, traditional Catholics rah, ripping each other in half all the time. It's got to end. It's got to stop. And we need, to, we need to try to come together and form an intelligent and effective strategy, which again is what the Catholic Identity Conference is all about. And the reality is, there are good people in the church who don't identify, quote unquote, as traditionalists. Not yet, anyway. Men in the church today who are beginning to see these time bombs that we're talking about for what they truly are. And they, these men may still be offering the new mass. They still may be insisting that the novelties of Vatican II can be interpreted in light of tradition, not realizing that this simply is not possible. As I said, Pope Benedict himself spent his entire pontificate trying to do that, but failed. Many traditionalists, including my own father, tried to do the same thing back in the 1960s until they realized there is no hermeneutic of continuity connecting tradition to the novelties of Vatican II. There's no way to smooth it out. It's just this isn't going to happen. But these men, they, 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 they still desired to try, to try to find that hermeneutic, to try to find some way of rescuing the church from this, the, those who hijacked Vatican II and so forth, trying to stamp it with tradition and make it fly. There's nothing wrong with that attitude, in other words. And we traditional Catholics, we have to understand that we are not the cold-hearted, judgmental, horrible people that the left and the modernists and the liberals, the picture that they paint of us, that is not us. We don't need to be uncharitable. We don't need to be denouncing people or denouncing cardinals who are not in lockstep with us. We know how to be patient. I know many good priests who are still offering the new mass, for example, in the mainstream church. They're doing it in the most traditional way that they know how. And then they also read the remnant. They support us. They want us to continue the fight. They're good men. But as of yet, they're still searching for a way to come back, come all the way over. Can't you see? So it shouldn't be that difficult for us to see good in a man like Cardinal Burke while admitting that he's not a remnant traditionalist. I, don't, I just don't understand. I don't understand these blanket condemnations of good men with whom we disagree, even on some key points, but who are nevertheless trying to do what is best for souls and for the church. I'm sorry, I'm just not going to give up on Cardinal Burke. He still has the faith. He still believes in God. 
He's totally devoted to the Blessed Mother. He believes that even the Pope must be resisted if and when he teaches error. He offers hope then to so many disillusioned families and souls and, and people, our co-religionists. So he doesn't see it my way yet on the issue of the Society of St. Pius X. But you know what? My brothers and sisters in the Society of St. Pius X are big boys and big girls. And they agree that we should not let this derail the progress that has already been made by Cardinal Burke. Let's let Cardinal Burke concentrate on the formal correction that we're all still hoping and praying is coming. And let's let him see in us the sons and daughters in the church who will support him and who will stand by him when he breaks the bonds of collegiality in defense of truth, even when the whole world mocks him for doing it. So Cardinal Burke still thinks that our friends in the society are in schism. <laughs> I think we can handle this. We know that they're not. And the Cardinal will come around on that eventually. Maybe he already has. And in the meantime, let's let him, let's let Cardinal Burke see that the true friends of the people, the true friends of those few bishops and cardinals who will stand up and resist, are neither the revolutionaries nor the innovators, but the traditionalists. He's all we've got right now at the level of the hierarchy. And maybe, just maybe, we're all he's got in this crazy world. Cardinal Burke is moving in the direction of tradition. He's not there yet, but he's moving. Let's not give up on him. Let's pray for him every night, at every rosary, every day, because so much depends on what he does next. Cardinal Burke, we're with you, and we're praying for you. I'm Michael Matt for The Remnant Underground, and we'll see you next week.